Welcome back. Earlier today, the Federal Reserve increased the interest rates to the highest level in 22 years, lifting their target rate to 525 to 550. That's a quarter point raise. Uh, Federal Reserve Chairman Powell indicated additional tightening is possible unless inflation continues to cool rapidly. What he said, quote, what our eyes are telling us is policy has not been restrictive enough for the long term to have its full desired effects. So we intend to keep policy restrictive until we're confident that inflation is coming down sustainably to our 2% target and we're prepared to further tighten if that is appropriate. The process still probably has a long way to go. That's what the chairman said. Taking a look at the current federal Funds probabilities. Uh, the white line represents the five to five and a quarter range. Black line is five and a quarter to five and a half where we are now. And the red line is the S&P 500. Now we can see as of mid-May, the, there was really a shift in the expectation. And this is calculated from the, from the futures market. And this basically tells us where the market believes interest rates uh, will be as of right now and as of the next meeting. Uh, and right now, the probability is uh, that there's a very strong probability that we're going to see interest rates in the five and a quarter to five and a half area. However, that can change. Um, we're going to watch the economic calendar very closely. And as this shifts, we'll be certain to uh, report that because you know, the last time this occurred, you can see uh, the crossover when the black line went up. That's the five and a quarter to five and a half range. And the yellow line went down and it crossed over one another. That was, again, mid to late May. Uh, that really sparked the beginning of a very strong trend in the S&P 500. You see the red line correlates very closely with the black line. Uh, so there is a strong correlation. And basically what this telling is telling us is if the anticipation is the Federal Reserve will still raise interest rates, it's telling us the bond market believes that the and that the market that the economy can withstand that and that stocks can go up higher that stocks will not be weighed down too heavily so it's a very interesting dynamic and we're going to continue to watch this very closely now if you're curious this is a, something that foreign exchange traders will often do they'll actually look into the text if you're curious what the market focuses in on well this is what it is this is a statement released by the federal reserve on the left hand side the orange text that's a statement from june our last federal reserve meeting the green text on the right represents today's statement what this does is it highlights the difference in the language and the difference in the language can be very very subtle but even those subtle differences can really move the market. So this and the highlighted part here is really what has changed, or the boldface part, I should say. So on the left-hand side, it says, recent indicators suggest the economic activity has continued to expand at a modest pace. Well, today, that language changed from continued to expand at a modest pace to been expanding at a moderate pace that the economic activity has been expanding at a moderate pace now analysts will really delve into the difference between a modest pace and a moderate pace that is the difference there's other nuances that are also slightly different if you look at the third paragraph here the committee decided to maintain the target range on the right hand side decided to raise the target range that's self-explanatory there's nothing really to look in there but the only difference the only substantial difference in the text from the statement released after the federal reserve statement in june on the left hand side and on the in july today on the right hand side is that first sentence that was changed from continued to expand at a modest pace to moderate what do you think? Is there a big difference between modest and moderate? I think moderate is more aggressive. Maybe that, you know, analysts and traders will think the Federal Reserve has to be even more aggressive, more hawkish in raising interest rates. Here's today's change in treasuries. 
Uh, the one month bond, no change, uh, two months down, one basis point. The big move here was a three, five, seven year treasury bonds down six basis points. It's not a huge move, but it is very interesting to see, uh, what the change is and what this is telling us. The three, five, seven years are intermediate, medium term maturity treasuries and this is reflecting the bond market's expectation over not the long term and not the immediate but over the medium term maybe you know i would guess maybe one to two years what the economy may look like and this is telling us that you know right now maybe the federal reserve may be inclined to raise interest rates further but higher interest rates now is probably going to weigh more heavily on the economy in the long term it's at least my take from it. This is where current U.S. Treasuries stand. The one-month uh, Treasuries at a 546, two-month 553. We have 5.5% yields all the way through the six-month maturity. The one years of 537, the 10 years of 386. And remember, again, today, the 357-year maturities really declined. And that is that increases the difference. That increases the difference uh, between the short term and the long term. And what this is telling us is that the short term, we believe the Federal Reserve may continue to raise interest rates. But the higher rates, it's a double-edged sword, the higher rates we see now, potentially the more difficult economic conditions we're going to see in the future. This is a one-month change in U.S. Treasuries. The biggest move, 5.6% increase in the one month treasury, a huge move to the upside. And that's telling us that the bond market is predicting and it's watching the federal funds futures that we spoke about that over the short term, Federal Reserve is still likely to raise interest rates. Again, the name of the game is inflation. The Federal Reserve has a 2% target. The last CPI year over year was reported at 3.1. They need to get that 3.1 down to 2%. As long as the uh, the employment market and other areas of the economy don't completely collapse. But so far, that's not the case. Now, we're going to talk about the housing market in the next couple of days and weeks. Uh, but what's really interesting is that, you know, we're hitting a dynamic here where the housing market is really, it's left with very high prices. And not because necessarily housing market analysts would argue, it's not necessarily because the housing market's so strong. It's just because these higher interest rates are keeping potential sellers away from selling because they know if they sell their house, they may buy another one and then they're going to get locked in a higher uh, mortgage rates. So, you know, it's called a lock in effect. And it's not, again, it's not something that's very common, but uh, this is where we are right now. Well, the high housing prices, well, the Federal Reserve, you know, we'd like to believe that they, they see what's happening and they don't, they should not interpret strong housing numbers for uh, a strong economy. And we have to look at, you know, employment numbers and a lot of other things. Uh, and this is what the uh, bond market looks like right now in terms of our inverted yield curve. The purple line at the bottom is a 10-year bond. The red line is a one-year bond. And the black line is a one-month bond. Now, we spoke a couple days ago and we said the name of the game again is to watch the one-month bond, that black line. That's going to tell us if the bond market is anticipating more interest rate hikes in the near-term future. Where the one-month bond goes, that's where the one-year tends to follow. Now, obviously, the one year is ahead of it's above the 10 year inverted bond markets. Uh, and when we finally exit this inversion, the question is, will the one year cross back down below the 10 year or will the 10 year cross back above the one year? And I think the difference is if we start to see trouble on the horizon in terms of the economy, we'd expect a short term yield to go down. But if we see that you know, this is really a soft landing. A lot of analysts are now saying, hey, maybe it's a soft landing. Maybe we're going to avoid the recession altogether. Maybe this was the absolute shortest recession in history. Then we would expect a 10-year to rise. But I think before any of that happens, the one month is going to start to get very active. Uh, so we'll uh, let the economic calendar uh, guide us along that way. And we certainly have a lot to talk about this week. GDP, durable goods. 
uh, I believe uh, PCE inflation numbers as well. Uh, so certainly gives the market enough reason to move. We hope this has been helpful. We look forward to seeing you back soon.